The controversy surrounding Virginia Governor Ralph Northam and a medical school photo he has since denied involvement with has brought the issue of blackface to a forefront in our nation's consciousness. But what are the origins of blackface? Why does it keep creeping up as a way to be funny? Why does it keep coming up at all? Why do these images evoke so much emotion? To understand that, you'd have to understand its history. Blackface's roots began in the early 1800s in minstrel theater. Minstrel was one of the first uniquely American theater styles. The performances conveyed black men and women as ignorant, hypersexual, superstitious, lazy, and prone to thievery and cowardice. 19th century white performers would use burnt cork, grease paint, or shoe polish to paint their faces black. In the early 1830s, the white actor Thomas Dartmouth Rice was propelled to stardom for performing minstrel routines as the fictional Jim Crow, a caricature of a clumsy, dim-witted black slave. This famous on-stage character became the iconic symbol of the negative stereotyping of black people. When Southern legislatures passed laws of racial segregation directed against blacks at the end of the 19th century, the statutes became known as Jim Crow laws. The laws enforced racial segregation in the South. Black individuals and communities who defied Jim Crow laws were often met with violence and death. In 1848, abolitionist Frederick Douglass took aim at the practice of using blackface after seeing a performance. He claimed the white performers painted in black had, quote, stolen from us a complexion denied to them by nature to make money and pander to the corrupt taste of their white fellow citizens. In 1915, narrative film in the U.S. had its start using minstrel and blackface characters with D.W. Griffith's film, Birth of a Nation a film believed to be partially responsible for the resurgence of the Ku Klux Klan. The film depicts black people as unintelligent sexual predators. The film has been preserved by the Library of Congress for its historic significance. Minstrelsy moved on to vaudeville, musical comedy, and theater, television, radio, and film. No, stupid. You mean a civil service examination. Well, a man carried me in a little room and set me down and started asking me a gang of questions. Huge stars like Judy Garland, Bing Crosby, and Fred Astaire all donned blackface. Early black actors, singers, and vaudevillians were forced to don blackface as well if they wished to perform for more lucrative white audiences. Jim Crow laws did not see their legal end until around the 1960s, after the Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court case and the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Act. But blackface endured, appearing on celebrities like Dan Aykroyd, Billy Crystal, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Howard Stern, Robert Downey Jr., and more. Fashion houses Prada, Gucci, and Montclair all came under fire for having items reminiscent or symbolic of menstrual characters. Blackface in America may be as old as apple pie and nearly as common globally. No wonder the conversation of its appropriateness is raised every Halloween or during this time of heightened awareness. But to what standard should we hold public and political figures if or when a photo emerges of them dressed in blackface? That's a question our country and culture hasn't been able to quite answer for over a century.